Good evening. I wrap sing with your metal market wrap up, and this wrap up is for the evening of Thursday, and we're now at the 23rd of May, 2024, about 6:20 p.m. Central Time. So, what happened today? You know, in my full research report, in the commentary, I start off with that exact sentence. So, what happened today? Well, let me tell you what I think today was. Number one, the markets had been waiting on the video. I told you. The earnings last night were phenomenal. The stock was up about $60. It ended up going way more than that today. Finished up about $88 on the day. And at first, it carried a number of the markets with it. And in my morning update, I had told traders, you got to have a stop, at least from from my opinion. Uh, You shouldn't see new lows made after about... 8.30, 9 o'clock in the NASDAQ. I was concerned in some other stocks that were in there too. And I wrote in the morning commentary, you know, NVIDIA is wonderful for the AI, but the market's got other sectors too. So what we ended up doing today is the market, when the correction happened, we had the biggest break in the Dow Jones since March of 2023, a single day break. 600 and some odd points. And it wasn't ignored in the metal markets. Why? Because yesterday, if you read the Fed minutes, and I kept saying this, I and I think I used the word, I said, the Fed isn't scared, they're very concerned. I think those were the words I used here. That their policies are taking much longer to get inflation down where they want it than has taken place. And that caused discussions. And it wasn't one or two members that were talking about hiking rates again. It appears to be that more joined into that conversation. That wasn't lost on the market. Let's go to another factor. What is today? It's Thursday. Tomorrow and today, a lot of people are leaving on holiday. They don't want positions. The traders move away from that. They're driving cars. They're going wherever they're going with their family. Uh, This is one of the biggest travel weekends of the year. Markets are closed in the stock market come Friday, I'm sorry, Monday. So what we have here is some liquidation that would normally happen anyways. People backing off from the market. The whole combination came to a head. And you started reversals where the dollar went up. Most of the currencies went down on the day. Uh, Silver fell more than I thought it should. It had an embedded reading and it totally lost it. The gold market is now about $100 off its highs, as you can see. And I think I am dead right in my analysis in copper. And this is that pullback I was looking for. And as I said in my copper report, well, Let's talk about that for a minute. Let's go somewhere before we go anywhere here. My special report on the metals. It is available right now. I put it up so that it would run through the holiday weekend for you. That's and It's gone. By the time you get back to work Tuesday, it's probably off the website. So please pay attention. You probably have tomorrow and through the weekend could be gone on Monday. Okay. The computer doesn't pay attention to holidays. It looks at what it calls everything but uh, Saturday and Sunday. So to see the report, and let me tell you what I did with it, and then I'll, you can go, I'll tell you how to get to it. I did the report on the futures markets for copper, but then COPX, which is the ETF, and then Freeport McMoran. And I think that all of them on this pullback get very interesting. Number one, we're not seeing the economy slow down. Number two, there's not going to be new supplies of world copper suddenly more available. Number three, you have growth going on in economies in China, 5.5% growth, 7% growth in India. The U.S. has still got solid growth. And now you're starting to cut interest rates or getting to be there in Europe and the U.K. because they want their economies to grow. As all this happens, where's this copper going to come from? The one thing when you start cutting interest rates, why do you do that? You want to pick your economy up. And that happens with industry, service, so on and so forth. But more goods will be manufactured, more homes will be built, more infrastructure will take place over time. So does copper have to rally today? No, but we're getting into zones that you have to look at. And while futures act one way, 
the ETF acts a bit differently, and certainly the individual stock acts completely different. So I offer all three. I show the seasonality of copper, number one, in the cash market. Then I walk you into the futures, both on a weekly and a daily chart, and more than one in that. And then I take you through the same exercise in COPX, and then we wrap it up, if you will, in Freeport. So it's going to be the seasonality in the cash markets, price counts, our proprietary uh, indicator that gives you an idea where it might ultimately go after a trend's hit in, which it has, and so on and so forth. Here's how you get it. You go to irapstein.com. And when you're there, just go to the word research. That's where it's going to be. You can click up here. You'll get there as well. Another thing you might want to take advantage of now that we're in the Memorial Day period. And with this, I've got my Memorial Day sale. Every now and then I'll throw big sales, and this is one of them. So here's how this will work for you. The Memorial Day sale is 40% off any of my courses or one-year research purchase. It's at irapstein.com. You can either go to the education section. That'll be where the charts are. You can go to the uh, research, and that's where all the other parts are. This is going to end in just a few days. So 40% off, this is one way you can take advantage of all that. Uh, I prefer that many of you take the combo package and or the full research uh, if you're getting that. And if you're doing the courses, well, today you're going to see that we had some outside days in markets yesterday, one way, and you broke through others and how interesting that is if you're in the outside days. And my new charting course, I just start, I just put it up on the website this month. Just redid it after, I think, eight or nine years. So you can really catch up with something I'm doing there. Again, one way to take advantage of it, irapstein.com and away you go with that. All right, let's take a look now at what we have tomorrow in the way of news coming at us and see if I can get you where I want to. I, I think I can. Uh, let me get over here. There's two pieces of news. There we are. Two pieces of news. We advanced durable goods sales going to come out tomorrow. They're looking for a decline in them. I can tell you that. And the University of Michigan uh, May Consumer Sentiment Index, and the word is final. So we get a prelim, and then you get the final. They're looking for a slight bump in it. And then we have the long weekend for Memorial Day coming up and pay attention to that. Now, you know, in the futures markets, you do have limited trading on Sunday night into Monday on the elect and it's all electronic markets, but you will have that. The volume will be light, but pay attention. All right. Don't get yourself into trouble in markets that are like that. Do remember. Memorial Day is a U.S. holiday, not an international one. So the foreign markets will be moving and they'll act accordingly. All right. So in the gold market, we're down three and a half percent for the week. You still have an upside bias. You can see that the market's over the 18 week average of closes. You can see that when we got up here, when you look back, you have a double top in place in the gold market. OK, not the worst thing in the world, but the market made a double top. And you go to analysts, they'll say, oh, yeah, that, that's it. You were right in that 2450 zone and the market broke down from there. The pattern is an instant correction. Remember I just said to you, you were at 24.52 and suddenly you're at 23 right now, 32. So you're down $120 an ounce. Lickety split. Okay. You stepped out of the uptrend. If I step back on this chart, uh, let's see if I can get that to do a two for us. The signal. There we go. Without today, you clearly had higher lows, higher highs, right? With today, this low takes out that low, and tonight you're just sort of hanging in there. So you've ended this upswing, and now the market's ready to reconsolidate. Has inflation changed? Absolutely not. Is the Fed still worried? Yes. Are we raising interest rates in America? Well, we're concerned that maybe some of the members are discussing it, but the odds of them doing it anytime soon are remote. Are we going to cut rates right away? Absolutely not. 
All right, that's what I think. I mean, I, I know that there are people that keep saying we're going to see a July cut. Uh, all you need to do is turn on CNBC. They'll bring in the analysts. I don't see yet what they're seeing. However, if they're right, it has to come from the data collapsing. And we'll see that collapse, I would guess, in June, July, and August, right? Well, that takes out July. <laughs> That's what I'm getting at. It doesn't work that way. All right. We're already going to be in June and the main numbers we're getting, we're going to see in June. And for July, you won't have enough numbers. So the July idea people are gone. September is still a potential play, but why? Earnings are great. Inflation is still stubborn. And if you cut interest rates, you get inflation going back up. The minutes show the Fed is having serious discussions about its members as they don't understand why the inflation with the restrictive policy they have isn't falling more. I think one of the things happens to be the strong employment. I have said this to you maybe eight months. Obviously, all the immigrants that we left in and went into the workforce are keeping employment numbers good, not bad. They're filling jobs. And right now, if you looked at the jobless numbers today, again, we have strong market. You're not seeing them jump at all. They were, they were less than the market was forecasting in the 215 area each week. Yes, the continuing claims jumped a little bit. 8,000 isn't a big number. So... You're still not there. That is the point that you've got. What are we seeing weaken? When you looked at the manufacturing indexes, be it Chicago's, when you look at Casey, they are not good. When we saw the Empire State numbers, they weren't good. So under the surface, there are things that aren't phenomenal. But when you look at the financial news, all you see is about AI and you think, oh my God, this market's going to run, run, run. It's an unusual stock in the video. It's a once in a lifetime thing that you see. I remember Microsoft being that stock. I remember Apple being that stock. So once in a business life for most people, because I do it for my living and I've done this all my life, I'm used to seeing these things come about and I get what it is. But it too will run out. I know you don't believe me now, it will happen. Competition will show up, other technology will come in that'll make other chips less money. Not everybody has to have their chips, but today, the immediate future, right in front of us, there's nobody to take them on for what they're doing. When we come to the gold market, this is the first move back under the 18 day average, okay. And as I said, we lost the bullishness, that's fine, but there's nothing on this chart that looks super bearish. And there is support in the market underneath you about $60 lower. When you look at the momentum, it's still pointing down. So could we bounce back up and fight a battle at the 18 day average here? Why not? That's the line in the sand, the neutral zone. It wouldn't surprise me at all. When we look at the gold silver, we are getting that correction. That's the way to look at it. You went straight from the 86 ounces down to about 75 ounces that you need for one ounce, and now you're climbing back about two ounces. Nothing dramatic. You could rally more. That's why silver is suddenly losing to this. And you can see on the silver chart, you lost the bullish embedded reading. And to me, that was the key. Once that reading's lost, which it was lost today, folks, I don't want to give you the impression it was just lost. It was lost today. That was the end of the game. So the market comes down, game over, got to be neutralized. Did the chart action turn bearish? Momentum turned bearish, but you haven't broken the uptrend. This market's got support at 29.19, but that is a dollar lower than this. Does it have to go there? No. Do the odds favor it? Well, the odds do favor now that price and the 18-day average are going to come together before you go back over 32.75. In the copper market, I'm salivating because this is just what I wrote about in my report. I was pointing things out. Vertical price rises often culminate with the markets coming down and going into a consolidation period. Again, Look at the report, irapstein.com under research. 
Then we get to the platinum market. This led the way. This was the first metal to crack. It lost its embedded reading about five days ago, four days ago, right in here. And prices, I think, will culminate hitting the 18-day average. And that's where I'm looking for support to show up. Not a buy signal, but that's where I think the bears, this whole zone is where they're probably coming out. In the dollar, I don't understand, and I, I think I've said that every day this week, if the U.S. is going to hold firm on interest rates, and they are going to hold firm at this point in time, and the European Union, for example, is looking to cut interest rates in June, and as they go, some of the other central banks will go, why isn't the dollar gaining more? It's problematic, all right? So I look at this, and I don't know if some of this has to do with what? Because this was your short covering rally, but the bias is down until you close over the 18-day average. You're over it tonight at 105.35, let's call it. That's over the 104.97 level, but barely. I mean, you've got to show that you can do that. And if it opens the door for a rally, the potential is there for the Bollinger Band, and you're coming out of an oversold condition. It hasn't thrown out to me anything that I'm in love with yet. So you put it together, that's your game plan. So 40% off on any of my research or charting courses. You move your cursor up here, it'll take you to the website. The copper report, that is available to you, and I did it intentionally so you could watch it through the weekend as well. Come Monday, it's probably off, so be careful, all right? Uh, the, our computers won't pay attention to holidays. Go ahead, take a look at that. It gives you such a story that I think is interesting. In the meantime, I'm Irapstein. I'll catch up with you in the morning. You have a good evening.